Even during times of war, Ukraine has not lost its love for the arts. On a Saturday afternoon in Kyiv, we watched as the country's top ballerinas perfected their form, their poise, precision, and physical strength, masking the daily threat of aerial bombardment. Even the instructor's attention to the smallest of details has not waned. When the Kremlin's troops launched a full-scale invasion 12 months ago, Ukraine's stages went dark. The Russian Tsar, Peter the Great, taught Ukrainians to love opera, while his modern equivalent was now responsible for a violent assault and thousands of lives. The resolve of the dancers is unwavering, even amid the conflict. A graceful show of determination, mastering practice, and performance in the most difficult of conditions. When we returned, immediately we started working with air raid alarms, with this internal anxiety, and even today, that's still what we face. We're not responsible for the military front, but for another psychological front. People come to the theater just to forget we have a war. Kyiv was one of the first operas to reopen last year, with other houses around Ukraine soon following. The show goes on as we're about to experience, but it's different than it was before. More matinees, less people, and a new risk that air raid sirens could go off at any time. And that's exactly what happened during the second act of La Traviata. The audience moved to the corridors and shelter, waiting for the all clear. And after 40 minutes, the curtain was raised once again. After the performance, I sat down with the show's leading soprano. They say music, and specifically opera music, provides a cathartic, emotional experience. How do you think your performances are helping the people of Kyiv, the people of Ukraine? We have a saying. We don't work in the theater. We serve in the theater. We serve art. We serve our audience. Each note raising morale in a country suffering the daily onslaught of an overly aggressive neighbor. Reporting from Kyiv, I'm Ryan Thompson for Newsnet.